It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer and I've started this beer review with a little smile on my face because uh, this is one of, or this beer review, originally when I first did it, first time round, was one of the most entertaining people found video. I went all the way to Norway to brew a collabor collaboration beer with L Lee Sheffield and Microbrewery and we went to um, an island where we had loads of food and drink and had fun. But when we settled down uh, into this little room where we were finishing the night, uh, they, they wanted to show the locals a video that I made. Um, and it was the Bellsbeth, Bellsbeth Extra Strong at the time. And I think I got it from Beers of Europe.co.uk originally. Uh, and if, it was the worst beer in the world. It was literally... I found it completely undrinkable, um, just one of those kind of like paint stripper type, just do a job, alcohol type beers. And it went out pretty well. I think there's something like 40,000 people have watched that video and it, it continues to be watched. And it's become a bit of a, certainly on this channel anyway, a bit of like a taboo beer. People talk about it all the time. So much so that... One of our wonderful followers out there, Rob, and his family went to France on holiday. And Rob went to like a corner shop near the train station. And he picked up a load of beers for me. Um, and one of them was another can of Bell's Buff Extra Strong. Uh, it's a, and I thought that was amusing. When I, when I unpacked this, when I looked at it, I thought, oh my goodness me. I mean, look at it now. It's a different can. It's a completely different can from the can that I uh, reviewed. Uh, very different. 11.8% um, ABV. Uh, they've taken the extra strong away. It used to be called Bellsbeth Extra Strong. Ah, 11.8% ABV. Now, this one is proper park bench uh, beer, this one. This is only being brewed to do a job. Um, it's only been produced and made for... People like, who like to drink 12% kind of lager beers. <coughs> Hopefully they've improved it slightly. Hopefully they've made some changes. It didn't look, I mean, it doesn't look like, does it? It's still 11.8% ABV. It's like rocket fuel beer, isn't it? I, I couldn't imagine buying more than two of these beers and even sitting in a pack and drinking it. I reckon... In the hot sun, drinking an 11.8% ABV lager. I think I'd have the sweats. I think I'd just be sitting there like, oh. Um, it's a French beer then, produced in France. Brasserie. Oh, it's Brasserie Good Ale. Ah, right, okay. Uh, anyway, um, thank you to Rob and his family. 500 mil can. Let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. The return of Bellsbeth. Oh my goodness me. Right, I can't remember my reaction. I can't remember if I stuck my nose into the bell. Obviously I'm not looking for that same reaction. Um, but I, I think of it, I don't even think I could get my nose into it last time. Uh, three finger white head, uh, carbonation rolling of the glass, uh, amber in colour, little bit unfiltered. What would be pretty scary is if, you know, all the beers that I've drank over the years, 9,000 of them, it would be pretty scary if I've actually got used to drinking these really strong beers now and I actually go oh this is not too bad actually that would be a very worrying sign for me that would be the probably the point where I go hmm I really need to evaluate my my beer reviewing evaluate the whole thing aroma no it's still got that like almost like rotting vegetables Slightly rotting vegetables aroma to it. Uh, 
and a push. It's got like a slight kind of French triple, French quadruple aroma to it. Oh man. Here we go then. Five minutes in, there's no more talking to be had. Cheers, everyone. Still no better. Oh. Oh. It's still no better. Oh, it's still giving me that, like that. Oh, that, that. Oh. Oh, it's terrible. That's a hold your nose job. Hold your nose and get it down. Oh. Oh my goodness me, I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine wanting to. I can't imagine like having a nice French baguette with some cheese in and some ham and sitting in a nice cafe and nice dainty tables and chairs like you get in France, maybe Paris or a little French town somewhere. And you're sitting there and the sun's shining. And you're, I know what I'll do. I'll have a pint of Bell's Birth. You know, it's like, it, it's just like not, it's just not in my vocabulary. This is more like wake up in the morning, um, look in your pocket, three euros left in your pocket type of thing. And hunting for a pack bench when you've got a cold can out the fridge and just sitting there sweating. In the French sunshine, drinking a can of 12% ABV cheap French lager. It's just... And I'm not judging anyone. I don't think I judged anybody in the first review. If, that, if that's what people want to do with their lives, obviously they're still brewing it, so people are still buying it. If that's what people want to do, then that's up to them. But um, I'm afraid it's not for me. Oh, 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 is there anything positive to be had? Okay, uh, it's probably got a little bit of like, a little bit of, a tiny little bit of like French, Belgian style quadruple about it. It's a little bit like a Belgian quad in the, like a, or a light golden triple or something like that. Um, but the rest of it, it's like, it's been, it's, it's had like, I can't remember what I said so many years ago about this beer, but it, it's almost like it's been infused with cheap alcohol. It's almost like it's been lined with, with really cheap alcohol. And it's, ah, it's, I can feel it going down into the pit of my stomach and it's burning. Like I didn't suffer from mass indigestion 10 years ago, but I'm on them blooming Omeprazole things now. And I can almost feel 10 years later the indigestion already starting within the base of my gut. It's like, ah. Society in there is it's such a sad thing, isn't it? It really is such a sad thing. There's people who can. There's people who can. There's people who can sit there in a lovely French cafe and sit there eating a nice cheese baguette and maybe like a half of a, 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 a French blonde ale that's really tasty. And, you know, they're able to enjoy the, the, the finer things in life. And then, unfortunately, there's people who can't. That's why I, I'll never judge anyone. I'll never judge anyone for, you know, buying and drinking this beer. If this is just, if this is just their fix, if this is just where they are in life, then, then it's unfortunate. And, I, you know, I hope they can turn it round type of thing, you know. But it's not for me. 12% French lagers. Cheap French lagers. Absolutely. This is as bad. This is as bad as it was 10 years ago. It's no better. Um, the return of Bellsbeth. Oh, my goodness me. I'm... 
quite surprised. I didn't know the brewery back then, but I've had a few beers now from Brasserie Good Ale. I've had La Good Ale. I was reviewing La Good Ale the other day. Um, it's amazing that this comes from the same, the same brewery. So the ingredients are water, barley, malt, corn, dextrose, aromatic caramel, hops, antioxidants, and ascorbic acid. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. That's that's exactly what we all want in our beer. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. This can't be doing this. This can't be doing brass really good. They can't be doing them much good at all. It can't be. It can't be like they can make really good beers. They can make the good ale blonde, which is all right. You see it in Morrison's. To see that, to see that with the ingredient list, they. It's almost like they should be ashamed to brew the stuff. One out of ten. One out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.